No, she actually is right here. <laughs> oh, there she is! <laughs> I was eating with me. You had your cap on. Where are you going? Anybody know Latin? What do you see here? This one right here. V's are, V's are U's. Do you see it? That's where the word starts. Oh, Pilots. Pilatius. Pilatius. Pilot. This is the only existing place extant from people's history books where the name Pontius Pilate actually was found, Pontius Pilatus. This pilot stone was what anchored the history that's involved with all of that. And it was found in secondary usage when they were rebuilding pieces of the arena that we're about to go in. That is the top 10% of what you're about to see as we move into that. And it has red slip on the outside and not slipped on the inside, which means it was for food. Oh my God, you can tell all that from one little piece, huh? Mm -hmm. yeah. And it's relatively late. <laughs> wow. Yeah. The first inhabitants of this, of this place were the Phoenicians. They built up maritime communities within one day sailing apart from each other. Why one day? Because we never sail apart. Now, they're not yet called Christians. No. They are called followers of Yeshua the Nazarene. In Hebrew, we refer to people who believe in Christ as Nutzrim. It's N-O-T-Z-R-I-M. Nutzrim comes from the word Nazareth. One 
What's this? What do you think this is? You guys go to uh, football games. What do you need You're the most? Shame. Yes. Yeah. Hot dogs and beer. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> this is the hot dog and the beer stand. All this was built by Herod the Great. He was an incredible builder. Some say he was a homicidal maniac because every time uh, something occurred in his life that was detrimental or catastrophic to him, uh, he would kill people and then go into some big building program. It was almost as though to purge his soul in the midst of the process. How close is the line between genius and insanity? You know, And he bequeathed to the world sons that were very much of the same ilk. Uh, and we'll talk a little bit about Herod Agrippa the first, one of the sons down the line, when we get into the arena a little bit later. What was the problem with that? Herod Agrippa decided he was a god. They're correct. Immediately, immediately an angel of the Lord struck him down because he did not give God the glory. He was eaten by worms and breathed. And then you began the saga of the fall. Which Herod is that? Herod Agrippa the, the first. That's this Herod. That Not the builder, the son down the road. Okay. This son. is Herod the Great began this process. This is the son of the Lord is killed. Herod the Great did that. Somewhere between 6 and 4 BC. The gray and the reddish is stone called Porphyr, and it came all the way from Aswan in Egypt to this location. Rather than saying to each other, we love you, that's what Christianity brings in, we curse each other. How do we do that? We build up an idol made of clay usually, we write all the cursing, all the, the words uh, possible, we break the head, and throw it into the wind. Now there are no boundaries between us, and we see it, and we see it, and we live. Yeah. <laughs> and we talk to each other and we fart and we poo and there are no, there's nothing, there is no um, privacy whatsoever. And the local doctor is walking by and he'll go, oh, ex excuse, excuse me, me. Madam, I see that you have a problem. We have a potion for that. Will you Correct. see me after? You see me after the, exactly after.
one of the best view spots around. This is called Mukraka. It's a Carmelite monastery. Uh, if you know anything about the different orders in Catholicism, Roman Catholicism, the Carmelite group within Catholicism, this is home. Okay, it started on Mount Carmel, hence the name, etc. But this particular spot is just marvelous in terms of getting your bearings. If you look over there, that's the Nazareth Ridge. Behind it is the Atofa Valley.
pie side and they had forgotten to bring any bread. And Jesus said, what? Well, he feeds them. And then Jesus says, what? You can walk on the water. And Jesus says, what? You can do that and the other. Signs and wonders have been performed in front of his men. begin to see the other backstories that are running, some of them a decade, some of them a century, some of them a millennium. It's amazing all the things going on. making it better. Really? <laughs> All these crazy people. Uh -huh. <laughs> Who was the prophet who said, turn your, um, a Jeroboam said in his heart, the kingdom will turn back to the house of David. If this people, the ten northern tribes, if this people will go up uh, to offer their sacrifices in the temple of the Lord at Jerusalem, well then the heart of the people will be turned against their Lord, to Rehoboam, king of Judah. They will kill me, they'll return to Rehoboam. So he took counsel and made two calves of gold. What a great idea. <laughs> let's change the worship spot, let's change the worship system, and let's introduce two golden calves. You don't know if that other ever occurring before. <laughs> and exactly how did that work out? Yeah. Here's the altar. Wow. The two golden calves are here. Teachers that have come to this place after them venerated living things, especially trees. So when you see an ancient site with altars and with uh, with things that were obviously a worship center from one sort or another, and you see a massive tree beside it, it's because the people in between, the Muslims, um, the Christians ahead of them, uh, Jewish people that still inhabited the area, you do not cut down Yitzchayim. <laughs> what are the major symbols for Israel? Don't tell me Magan David, the six-point star. Huh? That is the symbol on David's shield. That's why it's called a Magan David. Okay. What are the two major symbols of Judaism that come ahead of that, that are by far the more important? One of which appears on every piece of currency. The first one is the menorah, seven branch menorah. That's the symbol of this nation and was then. What's the second? Eitz Chaim, the tree of life. Begins in the garden and ends up in Revelation 22. Uh, city gate. This is the this is the late bronze mud gate. That's all mud ready. Here's the 
taking on the ancient international highway, the one we talk about all the way from Mesopotamia, under Mount Hermon, across the Jezreel Valley, through one of the passes, one of which we went through, the Megiddo, and down the coast. Who would take that route to come here from Haran, up north, at the edge of the Fertile Crescent? This gate was here when Abraham walked by. But normally in an area that had been pagan at one time or another, you have these stones, standing stones, uh, the Hebrews matzivot. And it might be one, it might be many, it might be statuary, it might be rude rocks like this. And I was explaining about matzivot. We don't know if it was the people who went to work in the fields who are asking God to guard in their place by the effigy of stones, you know. They're not worshiping the stones. This, this is us, guard our house. What we also don't know is whether the opposite is true, that it's the gods who are asked to stay here to watch over the people. But these were just uncovered, and I was standing here with a group of students that I was training at a dig. They were saying to me, well, who discovered all this? I said, well, Avraham Biran is, is the archeologist that has dug this for many years. And somebody said, well, how long has he been here? I said, I don't really know. It's been at least over 20 years. Well, how old is he? I said, he's got to be 150 by now. <laughs> and, and a voice from the wall says, he's 72. <laughs> I said, and who would you might be, ma'am? And she says, Mrs. Biron. <laughs> Guys, look a little bit over to the eastern side of the lake and you see the lights. The lights at the bottom, these are Israeli communities from long before the state of Israel was born. <laughs> Welcome to the Sea of Galilee. Thank you all for coming. It's a blessing to have you here. So, after I came to faith, uh, the Lord put on my heart to translate worship songs to Hebrew. And why Hebrew? Because Hebrew is His language. Personally, I believe that we all, when we go to be with the Lord, we will have to speak Hebrew. So, 
נכון, נכון, בדיוק, שפה של ישוע המשיח. If you don't know Hebrew, you better start practicing. <laughs> How do you say it in America? ASAP. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm going to teach you a little bit of Hebrew, and we're going to sing uh, maybe one or two songs together. The words I'm going to teach you now are not my translation, it's just from the Bible. All right? Kadosh, Kadosh, Kadosh. Kadosh, Kadosh, Kadosh. Adonai. Adonai. Elohim. Elohim. Tsevaot. Wow, you are good. Did you understand anything with us? You will, don't worry about it. Okay, let me tell you, it's holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, who was and who is and who is to come. They went and they woke him up and they said, Save us, Lord, we're perishing. He said to them, no. Why are you afraid? Where's your faith? <laughs> so he rose up and he rebuked the wind and the sea. wonder what he said. I wonder how that looked. What was his facial expression, his body language, the tone of his voice? You ever think about stuff like that? I don't think he had to scream and yell. He could be heard. No matter what the noise around him. Just a simple word. Hebrews rebuked the winds. There was great calm. And the men marveled, saying, What sort of man is this? That even the winds can see him. So the 5,000 are fed and everybody's all excited. Well, immediately, he made the disciples get into the boat and go before him to the other side. Probably over near Enkev, somewhere in that area. And he dismissed the crowds, and after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up on the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone, but the boat by this time was a long way from land, beaten by the waves, for the wind was against them. So on the fourth watch of the night, he came to them, walking on the water. When the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified, and they said, uh, it's a ghost, and they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them. What's he say? Same thing he says to you and me. Why are you afraid? What is it that can move you? Paul will pick up on this in 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Where he says, you let me live? Fine. I get to minister the Lord Jesus. And he blesses my heart and those with whom his words impact. But then again, if you take my life, where's the downside to that? Because then I won't. So, let me paraphrase a little bit. Take your best shot, world. You can't touch me unless you're allowed to. And if you're allowed to, it's by fiat from the throne. So, so be it. Bring it on. <laughs> How's this end? Take heart. Do not be afraid. And Peter said, well, Lord, if it's you, command me to come to you on the water. Impetuous Peter, prior to the indwelling of the Spirit. <laughs> you know, long on zeal, short on brains, okay? He's always opening his mouth at the wrong time and cramming both feet in before he can stop jabbering, you know? Come, he says. So Peter got out of the boat and walked on the water and came to Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid. He began to sink and he cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus simply reached out his hand and took hold of him. And he said, oh, you of little faith, why do you doubt? They got into the boat, the wind ceased. Those in the boat worshiped him and they said, truly, truly, you're the son of God. Are you ready, God?
Some of the trees don't even grow in the land of Israel. Aha! Uh -huh. That is connecting all of us into trade in the Middle East. We sell, we buy, we believe. Saturday morning and he said, I'm giving 10,000 US dollars uh, and I'd like to have my name on the, on the wall of donors, you know. The rabbi will call her and nicely, or maybe the rabbi's wife, the rabbitson, she will take care of the women, he'll take care of the men so for their needs. There's a need here and she'll go to that of house. Of course, but everything is done silently, so unlike today. today. Geometric form, nothing of other things, right? Geometric limestone and it's built on top of the synagogue from the time of Yeshua, which the foundations are preserved, local stone. If you divide the Sea of Galilee into four quadrants, this northwest quadrant is the Jewish quadrant. Southwest is Roman. That makes it pagan as far as Orthodox Jews are concerned. In Jeremiah, God says, I'm the former of the clay, and you are clay in my hands. What this means? That He's shaping us. Yeah? And He's shaping us, you know, through life, through people, through suffering, through crushing sometimes. And sometimes you're asking, why God? But, you know, He has all the answers, not us. But He wants us to be pure. He wants us, you know, to be holy. This is why he's doing this. And you know what I'm reminded of? When he's shaping me, I'm in good hands. What if my enemies will shape me? What if my friends will shape me? Isn't it? It will not be a good thing. But when God is shaping us, we are in good hands. So this is what we want to remind the people that we are in good hands over here, in the hands of the former of the clay. Five minutes, one hole. Five minutes, one hole. She's uh, dealing with the wolf from the sheep. You remember our friend that uh, he said that I would visit Hannah later on? Um, we are shearing the wool in two weeks from now on. Look, with a scissor like this one. This is a copy of the scissors that were found from the first century. So again, our tools didn't change much. Now, after we do this, we clean the wool, as you can see that she's doing right now, either by hand, either by this iron comb, which is very sharp and very dangerous, and then we have a basin over there. Over there, yes. It's, it's, one. it's about a month to do one like this. 
And then with all the leftovers from here and from down there, look what she has in her hands, the Barbies of the first century. Mm -hmm. They didn't call this Barbie, this is Hannah, Joseph, Mary, <laughs> <laughs> the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort the moons, ones who mourn, and on and on about the judgment of Israel before the reinstatement and restoration of Israel. But he stopped. Why did he stop? Because the first half was being fulfilled as they watched in the person of the Lord Jesus. The second half is still yet future to you and I. So he stops right in the middle. They wonder what's going on here. He explains to him, because that describes where I am and who I am now, not my role later. Well, he stops and he looks at me and he says, are you Ed Hardesty? I said, yeah, do you know me? He said, yeah, we went to high school together. I said, really? He said, oh, oh, oh. He says, this big, huge beard and he's bald. He says, take all this hair and put it here. <laughs> and I went, George! <laughs> and he says, uh, yeah, these are all my salesmen. I own the, the clothing store down the road here and we sell rugs and this, that, and the other. I said, what are you doing now? I said, well, I'm a minister. He said, you, you a minister? And immediately the thoughts of, of, of my mentor at Dallas Seminary came back to me. He said, someplace along the line, your past is going to catch up with you. And when you're screaming fire and brimstone from the pulpit, someone will stand up in the back going, woo, remember me? <laughs> Aren't you Joe's kid? We know you. We grew up with you. You were a kid playing in the street like all the rest of them. You're Messiah? Can't be. Yes, I am. Today, those words are fulfilled in your midst. That's blasphemy, unless it's true. <laughs> and the, the cure for blasphemy is what? Yeah. You killed him. No prophet is acceptable in his home hometown. <laughs> but in truth, I tell you, there were many widows in Israel, and he begins to talk about the other people that were healed that were outside of Judaism. So his point is, the door is open, and he's the door. That they couldn't take, because only Messiah can open that door. And they did not believe he was Messiah, even with the miracles done in their midst. And then, because he's branded a blasphemer at that point, he has to die. The argument came on, the movement of the people all the way to somewhere close by here within 10 or 15 meters this is the precipitous point on this ledge and it drops off 1200 feet so what happens in the scripture he passed through their midst and moved to capernaum they weren't allowed to touch him he was protected because the time was not yet when the time was right the lord of head took his hand of protection off and then there's a cross. I was in air rescue in the military. A lot of men died in my arms. Our job was to try and get them out of the difficult situation they were in and to keep them alive until we could get them to an evac unit or hospital. I've seen men mangled beyond belief and I've seen with, um, with hardly a mark on them. Some without hardly an external mark on them you couldn't see. Nobody dies ahead of time. Nobody stays a millisecond longer than your time. And I know who's in charge of life and death. And he doesn't consult me in the process. Basic axiom, and we'll go with this. The one who bought and paid for you with his blood, bought and paid for all rights to you. And he has an absolute right to spend you and I however he wishes. Are you okay with that? That's the real question.
Because Paul says once again, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, great paraphrase here. Let me live, I'll continue to serve the Lord. Take me out, where's the downside to that? I'm home. Either way, my ambition is not to please you. My ambition is to please him. We good? Why was Jesus hounded so much? Because needy people who think of the solutions to the problems if they just came to him. Now you know what time of the day we go fishing at the Sea of Galilee. What time? Between midnight and dawn. And the question is, how come? Well, the area is extremely, extremely hot. The upper level of the water gets very warm at night. That's where we are. See that arena? That's right here. But the one we drove oh, past gotcha. is part of the city. That's not oh, the next we'll try again. We see the mountain ridge of Gilad. At the stage, we have the rooms for the players to change their outfits. How many years ago? About 1800. The arena would have gone up to where you see the top of the wall there. This is for the intelligentsia. Uh, and that would have had a canopy and a backdrop. Sir, I'm the, I'm the doctor here. Oh my God! Mr. Doctor, I'm the 
Would you, you like, would you like to examine it? We have a tonic <laughs> that will help you. <laughs> Send me into my office after this occasion. <laughs> For he is the one who was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah when he said, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord and make his path straight. He wore a garment of camel's hair, a leather belt around his waist, his food was locusts and wild honey. And then all of Jerusalem and Judea and all the region around the Jordan were going out to him and they were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. That is an unusual situation. Then Jesus came from Galilee to the Jordan to John. It's cold. Yes, please. This one we have to put in my hand. It is. Don't fall in. No, my sunglasses almost fell in. <laughs> That's surprising, right? <laughs> up in the hills then uh, you're a desert if you're less than 15 inches of water per year scriptures and it's thought by many that the, the things that were found up in the hills in jars were not the original documents that they were using on a regular basis it's called a geniza it's that kind of lifestyle here and they are again fleeing corruption so they are, are striving the best they can to be pure
because he's holding it all together. It's, it's not the nature of that. It's the nature of him that makes the huge difference. knows where it is. Mid 19th century, explorers started to explore. <laughs> Lower terrace of his private palace. It is beautifully decorated there. The diamond shape is his ID.
the event? Yes. Baptism. What is baptism? Just some kind of ritual? No. It's a public statement of identification with the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ. Is he going to be any different after I dunk him under a waterfall? No. Empty hands on empty heads change nothing. <laughs> what he will be is obedient. And what he'll have done is make a public statement. When he died, I died. When he was buried, I was buried. When he rose in newness of life, that's how I wish to be identified with total understanding that he's the Lord of my life and none other. Mm -hmm. Because you have trusted Christ as your personal Savior, because you have testified and given evidence with your life that that is true in you, I have the right to baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Come take a walk with me. King David's menorah. Um, so where we're digging sand, where we're standing uh, right now is a city called Russia. We know about this place, Russia is mentioned four times in the Bible. are man-made but not by us. They're made by the people living over 2,200 years ago. Uh, this is the only natural resource they have in the area to build their houses, to build their city. Up on top is a thin layer of hard, crusty limestone called nari, but underneath that nari there is a thick layer of soft chalk. That's where we're standing now. In this we're just going to loosen up the dirt like so. Okay, as you're digging, you should never hear banging or crashing or smashing because that means you're breaking something. We don't want to break anything, just loosening up the dirt. As you start touching the dirt, you're going to feel a difference in the materials that you're pulling out. Do you have gloves? 
<laughs> we want to know their diet. What were they eating? Bones we're going to put to the fine bucket. Shells were mostly crushed up to make pot. Oh, here's a, here's a bone. Okay. Okay, and if you decide to go into a different room, leave everything in the room you found it. The dirt, the rocks, the tools. Oh. Go into another room and get uh, the tools and empty buckets in that specific room. Thank you. Thank you. Here, if you find something that's a little bit dirtier, that color, the size of a button, that's a coin. Uh, jewelry, we find it now in the sifting. Oh, you pour an entire bucket of dirt onto your screen. Back and forth. Yeah, we'll get rid of there. Okay. Uh, big rocks we'll gently put down below. A nice piece of carbon, it's going to go into the fine bucket. Using my hands over here, if anyone sees anything, let me know. Two rules. Do not sift with your mouth open. <laughs> and number two, find out which way the wind's blowing and do not stand down with. <laughs> How do people buy expensive dishes? Yeah, Marissa in the green But where we're sitting right now, and one of the reasons why we're not excavating here, most of these rooms, we know what they are. Um, so these uh, holes in the walls, this is called a columbarium. It was used for raising pigeons. But I want you to keep in mind, it was always underground. It didn't look like this when using it 2,200 years ago. This is the ceiling. The floor is somewhere 20, 30, 40 feet underneath us right oh, now. Because wow. if you remember when the Maccabees conquered Mauritius, the people living here destroyed their city. Everything up on top, they throw down into their basements, their industries below. And that destruction there is what we were digging in. And that destruction is what we're crawling through. Everyone got that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, now in Mauritius, we found so far 85 columbaria, enough holes for 50,000 birds. Okay. Meaning, Holy cow. thank you, big bird industry. And of course, the question is, we know from the Bible, birds are being used for sacrifice, sacrifice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One more thing going on, you remember the olive trees we saw in the very beginning? Yeah. Marash was covered in thousands of acres of olive groves. The best fertilizer for olive trees happens to be? Pigeon poop. Pigeon poop. Specifically. Foot <laughs> and then twist your body in. Twist your body, look to see that? Yeah, it's like... <laughs> <laughs> Good. Just keep down. Just keep down. Hello. Hello. Oh, yeah. Keep right there. Keith, what in the world? That was way too easy. Don't let the old man fool you. Watched a big step. Getting some footage. Some <laughs> down there, Garrison. Oh, gosh, what in the world? <laughs> well, we won't be able to see it once he goes through. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I said no, hurry. I said no. <laughs> I sense you now close to the candle. Like as, I, as I go down, oh yeah, I can see your face I'm gonna now. I'm going to drill back into the hole I came out of. <laughs> <laughs> you made it. Oh, <laughs> 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 
<laughs> you figured out how to laugh it? Yeah. <laughs> as it goes along. The Philistines were gathered, their armies for battle. They were gathered at Soko, the south side of the Ala Valley, which belongs to Judah. Yeah, but they didn't occupy it, they didn't control it, because the Philistines from the coast controlled this whole area. They encamped between Soko and Azekah, where you're sitting. They encamped all through here. Uh, F.S. Davim and Saul and the men of Israel were gathered in camp in the Valley of Elah. They drew up a line of battle against the Philistines opposite them. Where are they? North side of the Elah Valley. In his head, he was armed with a coat of mail. Uh, the weight of the coat was 5,000 shekels of bronze. He had bronze armor on his legs, the reefs on his legs. Uh, he had a javelin of bronze slung between his shoulder. The shaft of the spear was like a weaver's beam. And its head weighed 600 shekels of iron. That's a monster spear. Philistine said to David, Am I a dog that you have come out at me with sticks? Philistine cursed David by his gods, and the Philistine said to David, Come to me, I'll give your flesh to the birds of the air and the beasts of the field. David said to the Philistine, You come to me with a sword and with a spear and with a javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. It doesn't swing like this. It swings like, it's amazing. Now, where does it hit Goliath? Forehead. forehead. All it says is it sunk into his forehead. Is a, a bucket on a cable that goes all the way across the Hinnom Valley to some buildings on the other side. The wounded that were fighting to gain the old city were carried out in that bucket and provisions and ammo were carried across during the dead of night. And this is where, where one of the major battles took place. We're about to go through Zion Gate. Um, please understand, cars use Zion Gate and there's very little room in Zion Gate. Yeah. Uh -huh. 
seven branch menorah in the temple. How do we know that? Because the base is what's being disputed, but that base is the base that's pictured on the Arch of Titus when Rome took out When it rains up in the highlands, when it rains up around Jerusalem and everything, uh, it drains south through the Hinnom and the Kidron Valleys, and it eventually hits the Wadi Kiel. And then this becomes a river. Prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up. Every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level. The rough places a plain. The glory of the Lord shall be revealed and all flesh shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken these things. What's the point I'm trying to make? You now know what is necessary to make the hilly ground level and to make straight the paths in the wilderness. Do you see little trails all over the hills that wrap around them? Those are goat and sheep trails. There's not a straight path in sight except man-made stuff. And this is the spot. Now you can, John the Baptist was right down there. You see, you see the Rift Valley? This is his territory. This is where he would run. This is where he lived. North of Qumran and down into that Rift Valley. Jericho is right over those hills. We came by. The fort where uh, you can cross the Jordan where Jesus was baptized, at least the traditional spot that they talk about, that's just over the hill. This is the north end of the Dead Sea. This is a treacherous place. Life is extremely difficult. It's harsh down here. Uh, and it's not yet really hot. Imagine like the day we had the other day, cranked up another 20 degrees with no breeze here. You'd be looking for shade in a hurry. I, I love to put those things together and to help when I come to scripture to have a visual picture in my mind and memory in my feet that I have walked the turf, 
climb through that. I know what those trails look like. I know what life is like there. And all of a sudden, it's just it's so much bigger. Why would you settle for a little 12 inch black and white portable television in the kitchen when you could have an 84 inch Toshiba LED covering the whole wall? <laughs> Same program. It's just the ladder program is so much more, so much more beautiful. They left the world at the end, okay? Seven a long, 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 long journey, okay? After we were afraid they're 700 miles, and they reached a place called Haran. Haran is in the south of the day. Truly my blessing, are you not? <laughs> Give yourselves a hand for coming back 3,800 years. <laughs> you thought that was the hard part, didn't you? And I intone the following verse. <laughs> Blessed art thou, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who's brought forth food from the earth. Amen. 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 Some English speakers came to this magnificent land. Mm -hmm. And just like us, Thank you. Thank you. with each day that they were here, they felt inspired. They felt further uplifted. One could even say they felt close to God, yes? <laughs> One of those travelers, some thousand or more years before yours, but thousands of years after today, looks as he wakes up in the morning, he looks to the east, to the Orient, and feels that finally he has found himself. He has been inspired, he is closer to God. And he looks to the rising sun and says, finally I have found my orientation. <laughs> You're so bad. <laughs>
Another man. That hill is also called the Hill of uh, Evil Council. And what sits on top? The United Nations. <laughs> of the Temple Mount is called the Ophel. It's just a little saddle on an otherwise extending ridge. The Temple Mount itself is built on top of Mount Moriah. The wall you see wrapped around it, we'll talk more about this when we walk through the city and go to the Western Wall again. The wall around it is a, a revetment wall. Everything is filled in. The Mount of Olives is this section right here. Mm -hmm. uh, one spring fed this whole area. Okay. And the city of David is like this, a little spine. Much like a jalapeno oh, pepper. Okay. 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 Kind of like Israel itself. Yeah, and you're on the big end right now. Right. Small end is the full of salon. Okay. I'm more worried about hitting my head because I'm so tall. Keith doesn't need to worry about hitting his head. Oh, oh dang! <laughs>
from today. I wonder why. <laughs> the kind of technology. How would you move a 460 metric ton block that we'll see tomorrow? How would you move that into that place with standard equipment, nothing, no power, no hydraulics, no other. Okay. Palm Sunday takes place here, over the hill, and it goes in that gate, the eastern gate. Yosemite is right down there, just beyond the onion-shaped domes that you see. But the most poignant story I know from this particular spot is when he leaves Mary and Martha's house again and comes back and looks at the city. He drew near and he saw the city and he wept over it. He said, would that you, even you, had known on this day the things that make for peace, but now they are hidden from your eyes. For the days will come upon you when your enemies will set a barricade around you and surround you and hem you in on every side and tear you down to the ground, you and your children within you, and they will not leave one stone upon another, not another, because you did not know the time of your visitation. If you do the math from Daniel chapter 9, the 77s of Daniel. It brings you in the 69th 7 to somewhere in the spring of 32 AD. He's not just saying the cultural understandings, the political understandings, because many things have been brought to their awareness and the people are crying for a deliverer. But he also is meaning if you had paid attention to the prophet Daniel, you would have known the time of your visitation today, right now. Taiwan is not Jewish, and there isn't a single Jewish symbol. And what Jewish people decided throughout the years was to put little stones each time we come to visit the deceased.
Hello, that's my family. That's good. That's good. That's good. That's good. That's good. That's good. for me, nevertheless, not my will, but you. Which time do we have? What can you say? I think the sanest moment of any believer is when they come to the end of themselves and they're willing with all their heart to say, not my will, but you. He came to the disciples and found them sleeping. He said to Peter, so you could not watch with me just one hour? Watch and pray that you may not enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Again, for the second time, he went away and he prayed, My father, if this cannot pass unless I drink it, then your will be done. Again, he came and found them sleeping. Their eyes were so heavy. Leaving them again, he went away and he prayed for the third time, saying the same words again. Then he came to the disciples and said to them, Sleep and take your rest later on. The hour is at hand, the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us be going to see my betrayer. Jesus in the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it. And he said, This is my body, which is broken for you. And to this moment. Jesus gave his himself, his whole self. And um, 
we think of uh, so much the physical part of a crucifixion, but it even went much further than that because he took our sin on himself. Do this as often as you hear because as often as you drink this cup and eat this bread, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes.
Cat among the lavender. <laughs> Space. Because in every piece there is a story that we have to tell you. She is going to do, we decide. Before we start on a piece, we decide what we want to do. Once we build the prosperity, then we start putting the colors. Now all the colors that you see are oxides of minerals. Take a knife and try to scratch one of my pieces. But I advise you not to try this in the shop. <laughs> okay? Yeah. 
a seller, yes, cellular. You comprehend our complex. From earth quaking to hearts breaking, you care for our condition. Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Heart to heart, you speak to me.